Tony Wagner is a leading education reform expert. He is the first innovation and entrepreneurship fellow at Harvard University, and prior to that, he was the co-director of the Change Leadership Group in Harvard's Graduate School of Education. Dr. Bertram sat down with Tony Wagner recently to talk about whether education is currently meeting our students' needs. Take a look. Well, Tony, thanks for joining us today on Education Matters. We're really excited to have an opportunity to talk with you. And obviously, over the last decade, you've done some wonderful work in the Change Leadership Group at Harvard University and, and your work there. But I know your role is changing and new opportunity, a new book coming out. And if you could take a few moments to elaborate on that. Sure. Well, I've just been named the first Innovation Education Fellow at the Technology and Entrepreneurship Center at Harvard which is under the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. So I'm in a different domain. Yeah. And um, that's in part because uh, of the focus on my new book. My new book begins with a premise, which is that we have to transition from an economy driven mainly by consumption, which I think is no longer sustainable economically, environmentally, or even spiritually, to an economy that is much more driven by innovation. And I don't mean just having a few breakthrough innovators like the Bill Gateses of the world. I mean preparing every young person to be a problem solver and to create new solutions to some of the most pressing problems in the world. And so my new book, Learning to Innovate, Innovating to Learn, is going to focus on that challenge. Well, we're looking forward to reading that. And I, even going back to the Global Achievement Gap, the book you wrote um, in the last couple of years, and, and you really took on the, really the status quo, talking about failing schools and how we've had this national discourse about failing schools. But you took a little different approach, that it's not about failing schools. It's the fact that our schools are archaic in many respects, and the world has changed so rapidly, but schools haven't kept up that pace. Well, what I've come to cl more clearly understand is, in fact, that there are two achievement gaps. There's the achievement gap between our disadvantaged students versus our middle class students, which is the one we've been focused on now for a quarter of a century, and, and it, rightfully so. But there's another achievement gap, and that's the gap between what even our best schools are teaching and testing versus the new skills all students will need for careers, college, and citizenship in the global knowledge economy. And it is to that challenge that I believe we are sort of completely unprepared. And it's not that our middle class schools are failing and we go through and they get their job done in a manner of speaking, but the problem is they're not teaching the skills that matter most. They're not motivating today's students. And that's not so much of a failure as it is an obsolescence. You know, 150 years ago, we had the one-room schoolhouse for a rural agrarian economy. We transitioned to an urban industrial society and created our factory model assembly line schools that we still have a century later. So what I'm trying to suggest is that it's time to once more, in light of the changes in the world, reinvent again. Because we've seen that, that change take place in other industries and organizations that have innovated are ones that are prospering today in this new economy, yet we've seen a lot of organizations go away. We're in education, we're not necessarily going away, but our students perhaps are suffering as a result of that and not having the skills they need to advance in this economy. But you've spent a large part of your career around change and how we move this institution. So when you talk about these gaps, how do we best go about making those changes that you're proposing? Well, I don't think you can take a group of teachers and parents and community members who only know one kind of education and suddenly ask them to shift to something completely new and different they've never seen. I think we have to develop the R&D capability, the research and development capability, and incentivize teachers and parents who want something new and different to have it to create laboratory schools within our existing school districts, charter-like schools, schools of choice, where parents and teachers can come together and embrace a, a kind of approach to learning and to assessment that can point the way for the rest of the district over time. So without that R&D capability, without incenting our early adopters and risk takers, it, it's all or nothing. And then it's always going to be nothing because we're, we're a risk averse profession. So we have to then, I think, do it a step at a time, beginning completely voluntarily without any kind of coercion. Well, it's interesting you talk about that because within our own school district, we have a lot of models happening around our school district. We talk about innovation on a regular basis, and, and that innovation has to come from the schools and people who are there on the ground that recognize the need for change and are willing to take that risk. And I, So what you're suggesting is something we've adopted in the Evansville Vandenberg School Corporation, so we're excited to, again, follow your work as you move into this whole innovation model.
And as you just heard Dr. Bertram say, the EBSC has been at the forefront of this effort to develop school models that fit the various learning needs and methods of our students. Here are just a few. We wanted to make this um, education like nothing they've ever seen before. Our goal was to make it so that everybody wanted to come uh, to school every day and that they would get excited about their education. Inside the Shepherd Academy for Law and Social Justice, students are thinking critically, witnessing court cases, civil rights issues, and being taught via the Socratic method, all while in high school. Since I was little, I've always wanted to be an attorney. I've had that set in my mind, and I've got some bigger plans. So. It's the motivation to get a head start on a career that makes the Shepherd Academy and Project Lead the Way programs attractive for many young learners. It teaches them a lot of the basics of engineering and uh, obviously they still need to go to engineering school. Education models like these are engaging students, creating choices for students who aren't interested in the traditional classroom setting. I really don't like textbooks because they're boring and I don't want to take notes and have lots of tests. Like Aubrey Jones, the New Tech Institute High School is perfect for her. The project-based learning and textbook-free environment keep her attention and keep students learning. For other students, an incentive, like an associate's degree through early college high school, keeps them motivated. I wanted to graduate early and I wanted to be ahead of most people and be, go to where I want to be in life. And there are programs for elementary and middle school students too. Programs like Rosetta Stone Foreign Language, pulling students in and making their education seem relevant. Ella screaming. Reporting for Education Matters, I'm Jennifer Cahill. Coming up after the break, more with Tony Wagner and Dr. Bertram on how education can miss the mark in preparing students for the future. Stay with us.